So I've been thinking, what are the minimum tools needed to safely replace a DualSense joystick module? And I'm down to this. You will want a temperature controlled soldering iron, a pair of small side cutters, a small Phillips screwdriver, size zero or double zero, either seems to work, a tiny plastic pry bar, AKA a spudger, a pair of tweezers, and a very small pair of pliers. A couple of very small flat blade screwdrivers, or one screwdriver and the tweezers, they will be used for prying, so almost anything that is small and has a sharp edge will work. Some solder, made for electronics, and some solder wick. And finally, something to hold the controller's PC board while you work on it. And with these items, a DualSense joystick module can be removed without damaging the PC board. Most of the time, the problem with the joystick module is going to be drift. And that doesn't require replacing the entire joystick module can just replace the potentiometer that's causing the problem. What I have here is a DualSense version 2 board, and the left stick is drifting. To be more precise, the left stick is drifting to the left. Up and down work fine. And the joystick modules on this board are made by Alps. Let me get the board in the holder so it can take a closer look. This is the potentiometer that controls the left-right movement, and it needs to be replaced as cleaning has not solved the problem. It has three leads that are soldered to the PC board and two plastic tabs that hold it to the joystick module. So let me separate the potentiometer from the module. Pressing in on the tab will make it easier to pry the potentiometer away from the module, though the leads are pretty stiff so it doesn't move that freely. It takes a bit of pressure to bend it away. When prying it off, you want to make sure you don't damage the plastic shaft that is sticking out of the joystick module here. If it's damaged, then the entire module will have to be replaced. Once the potentiometer is separated from the module, it can then be unsoldered. I'm going to show two ways to unsolder the potentiometers. First, I will put some fresh solder on the three pins. For this method, I will use a small piece of heavy gauge copper wire. This is 14 gauge, but 12 to 16 gauge will work just fine. I will cut the length to just a bit longer than the width of the three pins. I will add solder till it is actually soldered to the three pins. Then I will apply the soldering iron to the copper wire. The heat will transfer to all three pins, melting all the solder. Once the solder is melted, can just pull the potentiometer out. Then just knock the wire off the PC board pads. Very easy and have been very gentle to the PC board. Again, I will put some fresh solder on the pads. Then we'll clean the solder off of and out of the holes with some solder wick. Now I'm not applying very much pressure with the soldering iron and I'm looking for the solder to stop flowing up the wick. Once the solder stops moving up the wick, if everything goes well, the pad and hole will be cleaned out. This pad here is the ground pad and it takes a bit more heat than the other two to remove the solder. If the wick doesn't clean out the hole, apply some fresh solder and try it again. Once the holes are clear of solder, can clean the flux off with some isopropyl alcohol. Then we'll be ready to install the new potentiometer. If you don't want to remove all three leads at once, there is an easy way. After separating the potentiometer from the module, take the wiper assembly out. It pops out easy. I'm going to cut the potentiometer apart. The idea here is to separate it into three sections, one for each pin. It's kind of a brittle plastic, so it breaks apart pretty easy. Again, I will put a bit of fresh solder on each of the pads. Then we'll grab a piece of the potentiometer with the tweezers, heat the pad with the soldering iron, and pull the lead out. By removing one lead at a time, we are being very gentle with the PC board, not forcing anything, not applying much pressure with the soldering iron, not really trying to apply any pressure to the pad. Once the solder melts, 
just want to hold the tip of the iron into the melted solder. The less pressure on the PC board pad, the better. Again, more fresh solder, and then remove the solder with the solder wick. A little extra heat on the pad that is connected to ground does aid the solder wick. After the holes are cleared of solder, can clean the flux off with some isopropyl alcohol, and then it's ready to install the new potentiometer. There are two brands of joystick modules used, one made by Alps and the other by Favor Union. The Alps will have green potentiometers, the Favor Union will have orange potentiometers. While the joystick modules are interchangeable, the potentiometers on the modules are not. Fortunately, can now buy both brands of potentiometers. For the DualSense controllers, want to make sure and order the 2.3K Favor Union orange potentiometers or the 2.1K Alps green potentiometers to match the brand of joystick module being worked on. The 10K versions are for other controllers. Don't use them. One important point before we install the potentiometer, the wiper assembly needs to be in the correct orientation. Every one of these I've seen have a notch or flat area that indicates the wiper contact area. So want to make sure the wiper notch or flat is opposite the pins and that the center slot is very close to straight up and down. Then insert the leads into the PC board, line it up over the shaft and press it into place. And all the hard part is done. Then can sort the leads in place and put the controller back together. But what if there is something mechanically wrong with the joystick module and the entire module does need to be replaced? First step will be to remove the potentiometers as was just done. There are now eight leads left sorted in the PC board, four small that belong to the switch and four large leads that are the frame of the joystick module. There are a lot of cutouts in the joystick's metal frame and we can take advantage of them to make it easier to cut the module apart. Can see the two frame leads are part of one side and there is an open seam between the side with the leads and its adjacent sides. The opposite side is the same way, two leads and open seams at the corners. So with no connection at the corners, the only thing holding the four sides together are these small metal areas around the top. All these little metal connections here and they are quite easy to cut with a pair of small side cutters. So that's what I will start with, cutting all the metal webs, well most of them. I'll remove this plastic piece here. It holds the shaft down over the switch. The switch is just a small push button switch that can be cut apart quite easy, though this can be done after the metal sides are removed. And I want to make sure and remove any pieces of debris that land on the PC board. Don't want anything shorting stuff out when it's put back together. The metal is quite soft and cuts pretty easy. So that separates that corner. Now here I'm going to go ahead and cut this side into two pieces. Separating the two leads that are sorted to the PC board, it's a little easier with the one corner still connected. This is the easy side to cut, half just a small area to cut through. Then I'll cut the webs at this corner. and now have two of the four leads separated. Then I'll cut the last webs at the other two corners and remove the internals of the joystick.
This is the hard side to cut through. Well, it's not harder metal. There's just more of it. And this is where you will need to have some small pliers or something to hold one edge of the metal. Don't want to wiggle it so much on the PC board. So now, all four frame leads of the joystick are separated and can easily be removed. Just like with the cut potentiometer leads, I'll put some fresh solder on the pads, grab a metal frame piece with the tweezers, and just ever so gently pull on it. Then heat the pad with the soldering iron until the piece of joystick frame is no longer soldered to the PC board. Repeat that three more times, and the metal joystick frame is now gone, and the PC board is no worse for wear. Only thing left is the switch. Can just take the side cutters and cut each corner of the switch. The leads on the switch are quite thin, so it doesn't take much. Then can remove the joystick base, and then it's just the four switch leads to remove from the PC board. Fresh solder again on the pads. Always fresh solder. It just makes everything go smoother. I'm pulling these out from the top mainly because the video can just as easily do it like all the other leads. Yes, more solder. The old lead-free solder that is on the board doesn't flow up solder wick nearly as good as the 6337 tin lead I'm using. Then it's time to wick the solder out of the holes. I'll hold the iron to the solder wick till I see the solder stop moving up the wick. If the wick doesn't clear the hole, I'll apply fresh solder and try again. Now the large holes may need a bit more heat as they are connected to ground it seems. The flux residue from this solder wick does need to be cleaned off the PC board. I'm using some 99% isopropyl alcohol and cotton tip swabs to remove the flux. I'll clean both sides as some of the flux will have flowed through the holes. Now that the joystick module is removed, I do want to point out a couple of spots to look out for. These very small parts here and here. These along the side of the board are very close to the edge, so need to make sure whatever is holding the PC board does not hit them. And this part that is right at the corner of the joystick module this one have to be very careful while tearing apart the joystick. They are very durable parts, but they won't survive being clamped on or a slip screwdriver catching on one. There are a lot of very small parts on the PC board, and have to watch out for all of them. Okay, it's time to put the new joystick module in. If none of the leads are bent, it should drop right into place. Now I will hold the joystick against the PC board with my hand and I will solder two of the frame leads to start with. Then I will take it out of the holder and I will double check, maybe even triple check, and make sure the joystick module is flush to the PC board all the way around. With only two leads soldered, can heat one and push it flush if it's not. Once I'm happy the module is properly in place, I'll solder the rest of the leads. I will clean a bit of this flux off, but there's not really that much to worry about. I just like it to look nice. Alright, that's it. It's ready to be put back together. I thought I would go over the tools I'm using, at least some of the important ones. The soldering iron I'm using is the Heiko FX951 with the standard handpiece. This is the best soldering station I've ever used, but it is not cheap. And this much iron is not needed to do this job. I think as long as it's a temperature controlled iron with a minimum of 60 to 70 watts, it should work fine. I had the temperature set to 750 degrees Fahrenheit for all the work in this video. Almost any of the electronic pry apart kits from Amazon will have most everything needed, 
Most of them will even have the screwdrivers, and maybe even the tweezers if it's a bit bigger set, and will still be pretty cheap. These side cutters are the Heiko CHP170 Micro Cutter. I've had this pair over five years, and I've used it for things it's not made for, like cutting apart joystick modules for one. They're still in pretty good shape. Can't say enough good about them, especially for the price. I need to remember and order me another set, maybe two, keep one just for component leads. I used a couple of different sorter wicks for this. My favorite is the Gootwick, that's G-O-O-T-W-I-C-K, but it seems have to order a large roll to get a good price on it. So unless you plan on using a lot of sorter wick, probably not worth it. The other wick I used is the MG Chemicals 426, and I found it to work very well and can get a five foot roll from Amazon for less than $4. So it's not expensive and easy to get. Not worth saving a dollar or two to cut corners here. A good working sorter wick is worth its price. Go with the good stuff here. The sorter is another place not to cut corners. The sorter I'm using is Kester 44, 6337 tin lead. I've got the .02 inch diameter here, but can go with the cheaper .031 inch for this large of pads. This has been my favorite sorter for years. It's just a fantastic sorter. A pound of it is expensive, but lasts a long time. The PC board holder I'm using is an AVEN 17010. I bought it from Amazon a while ago. Don't think they have this exact one anymore, but they have several different ones that look just like it. It was cheap, less than $15 when I bought mine. It's a bit on the flimsy side. In spite of that, I've really been surprised how much I've liked it. I use it all the time, and it works quite well at holding a DualSense controller PC board. I'll put a link to my previous video that includes taking the controller apart to get to the PC board. I should make a new one. I've gotten better at taking them apart, but it will show where everything is connected. Well, good luck with your controller repair, and thank you for watching.